I believe that it is so important to bridge the gap between being taught by snowmobile coaches to practicing those skills while gaining seat time on your snowmobile. But how do you gain seat time and practice those skills when you have no one to snowmobile with? Do you take more clinics and spend more money just to meet other women riders? Do you rely on your male friends or your partners because you don't have the confidence or the courage to ride without them, load your snowmobile or unload your snowmobile? Or are you intimidated to reach out to other female riders who are considered more of an advanced rider because you are worried that you're going to slow them down? In today's episode, we're going to talk about the importance of women's only social rides and why you should attend any local events, reach out to women riders, and stop spending big money just to meet other women's letters. Let's Let's go. go. And hey, hi, and hello, I'm Angelisa, your host for Brat Babes Throttle Talk. And today I'm going to share my experiences with you um, about some social rides and some of the mistakes that I made when I first started sledding, which was 11 years ago. (laughs) Crazy. Um, But before we dive into that, I organized a women's only snowmobile and snow bike social ride with powder mountain snowmobile club in whistler on january 27th which was a couple weeks ago and we initially had 34 women sign up Um, but because of the weather um, it was downpouring rain and 23 women showed up which was incredible Um, i was not expecting that during the social ride the weather was miserable so we got wet and a few ladies left after a couple hours (laughs) but quite a few actually stuck around until two which was pretty unreal Um, but for those that left early I couldn't blame them I was getting soaked and also I am still currently sick was really ill actually that day of the event Um, I thought I was gonna leave early but I stuck it out till two (laughs) I couldn't leave early on my own event right Um, which I'm glad I didn't because uh, it ended up being it was a lot of fun but um, at the end there some of the girls were learning how to wheelie and that was a lot of fun I love seeing women push themselves and learning something new and uh, yeah we got some good wheelies on camera the girls um, took home a goodie bag so we had enough goodie bags for every single person that came out Um, there was so much swag from sponsors and partners like CKX gear backcountry motorsports healer DSG snow no limits motorsports and Polaris we also had Tony from Brew Mountain Cafe. Um, she hooked up all of the brat babes with lunches, which was so delicious and so nice of her and just just amazing. We've never had that. We've never had lunches or food provided for the ladies in our social rides before. So thank you to all that came out. If you're listening, thank you for braving the rain and a massive thank you to Powder Mountain Snowmobile Club. We have Mallory, we have Yuri and uh, Jesse for your helping hands. I really do appreciate all of your help and support and also want to thank our sponsors for all of the amazing prizes. Like every single woman left with something massive. So thank you to those that made this event possible could we have used a bluebird day (laughs) absolutely but all in all it was so nice to meet new friends and it was awesome to see returning women riders Um, a few of the girls that came out have attended all of my social rides in the past seven years Oh my god, I it hit me today that I have been putting on social rides for seven years. Isn't that insane? Like I can't believe it to me, like I remember the five year mark being like, okay, it's five years, but my gosh, like holy moly. So organizing and hosting snowmobile and dirt bike social rides for the past seven years. Um, in order for this episode and my other YouTube video that I'm actually currently working on. I did this huge deep dive and I went through the archives. I went through all of my photos, all of my videos, and I pinpointed all of the events um, and social rides that I put on. And 
um, doing my research of all the in-person socials, um, I want you to take a stab at how many I've hosted. So what we'll do here is actually a little contest. Um, so I want you to send me a message over on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Angelisa Edwards and tell me a number of how many social rides I put on in the course of seven years. So the winner will take home a Brat Babes coffee mug and um, that reads, inhale the two stroke, exhale the bullshit. And I'll also include some other goodies in there as well. So send me a message with a number of how many events you think I've put on in person and the one who guesses right wins a coffee mug with some extra goodies okay so good luck and send me the dm over at and at angelisa edwards okay let's get the show on the snow get it i think i'm so funny but i'm not (laughs) okay social rides let's talk about it if you're unfamiliar with a social ride it is basically a gathering of individuals coming together to socialize just that um say so they want to meet like-minded people and to connect with one another build friendships and gain confidence and courage while doing something intimidating and scary the idea behind my social rides is exposing women to other women finding their tribes within these meetups learning from one another as we all learn in different ways and i believe that There is no one way or the highway type mentality to do a specific drill. Um, So I believe that collaborating and working with other women and sharing what we've learned and bouncing ideas back and forth is how we learn in new skills. Um, I also treated my social rides as a self-care day for myself where I got to meet women and and gain seat time to practice my skills that I learned at clinics. So let's go back to younger Ange um, when she just started sledding. So there wasn't a whole lot of women um, when I first started sledding. There was definitely a handful of us, but I found it really hard to meet those women. I had no idea where they were, no idea where they were hanging out. And I found it really hard to learn more about the sport as at the time, knowledge was limited online for us women. Over the first couple years, um, I took clinics how to ride and I will be the first to tell anyone that's getting into the sport is to take a clinic when it comes to sledding. It is a must. Sledding is one of the hardest sports and it doesn't make any sense in the beginning when you are learning the counter steering and getting the sled on edge just to traverse on slopes and get from point A to point B to do the shit hook or the J hook when you're, you know, in a very tricky situation. So it's so important to learn those skills by coaches, but also what's a huge must is taking those skills and practicing them on your own time. So yes, I'm a huge advocate when it comes to finding a coach that you trust, learning those skills, and then taking the time, getting that seat time to practice those skills, okay? Because you're not just going to be a better rider by taking one clinic or just taking clinics. You'll get better eventually, but what's most important is the seat time, taking those skills that you learned at the clinic and applying it on your own time, on the snow, and just to practice. Taking these clinics, I learned a lot, like I mentioned, but I must admit, and I'm actually ashamed to be admitting this, um, but there came a time in my learning curve, in my sledding career, um, is that I was just paying for a clinic to meet other women. The amount of money I spent is outrageous um, just to find like-minded women that I could meet, that I could build a friendship with to start to snowmobile together to, again, gain the seat time. I ended up meeting, you know, my tribe eventually. It took a while, um, but I just want to let you know that I ended up taking two clinics like per month, one season, and spent about $3,000 just so that I could, well, yeah, one, learn a trick or two, but also like just to meet other women. So that's like a huge cost on my end to just find 
like-minded women to sled with. I was desperate. I needed to find a tribe. I needed to find people to ride with. And this is why, is because when I first started sledding, I had a baby, baby Stella. And so I was a new mom. I was learning a new sport. My husband and I never sled together. We were taking turns with Stella. So his days was Saturdays, he got to ride with a bunch of his male friends. And then when it came to my day, which was Sunday, I would have, you know, a few people lined up to go ride. But then I had the amount of times that I had people bail on me was so upsetting. And it just came to a point where I got frustrated and I got sad because I wasn't able to take the skills that I was learning and apply it because I knew that I had to put in the seat time. I knew that I had just had to take a day to learn on my own or with another girl, another gal pal of mine, where we could help each other unload our snowmobiles and load them back up. I didn't want to depend on Kenny because one, I couldn't. He had to be at home. So I had to find a way to get my seat time. And I knew it was gonna take time. I knew that it would take way more than just one day on learning how to do these things. Because again, with sledding, you're not just gonna get it in one day. Um, And if you do, well, props to you because you learn so well. For me, it took a very long time and actually a longer time than, again, I would like to admit. Um, So, so yeah, I was uh, frustrated and I was sad and I knew that I needed the seat time to get better at my skills. Um, So how could I get that seat time when Kenny was at home with baby Stella and how could I learn how to snowmobile when I had my day to ride? And like I said, every day or every Sunday that came up, um, I had no one to go with. Like I I was frustrated. So three years into sledding, I took it upon myself and I took my frustrations and I decided to put on a social ride because I wanted to meet more like-minded women and to book a day for myself that I knew people wouldn't bail on. I also wanted to gain more confidence when it came to loading and unloading my sled by myself. I wanted the courage to go up with some gal pals and figure out sled mechanics on our rides. And I wanted to learn how to get each other unstuck without our male friends. I honestly wanted to have a girl gang where we get to meet up once a week and all we had to do was just get together, help each other out, and just go on the trail and then eventually go into a safe sled zone and just figure it out like we just that's what I wanted I just wanted somebody to that was similar to me in the same level of riding as I was and just figure it out because that's what you have to do with sledding is just putting yourself out there putting yourself in situations to figuring it out Because again, we can learn all these things online. We can learn these things in the clinic. But until we actually put ourselves in those positions, in those predicaments where it's like, oh, now I need to know how to do this on my own. You know, especially when you have like a group of you where you can collaborate and help each other out, work through whatever it is. You know, let's say a sled's gone down. Well, you can figure out how to tow yourself out or tow that sled out. Um, Again, with sledding, you're always going (laughs) to learn something new. Uh, Every time we go out, there's always something. Always something. So that's what I wanted. I wanted a girl gang that I could just call up and be like, yo, we're riding on Sunday. Let's go. Meet me at the parking lot. Let's go. There was nothing more exciting than doing just that for me. The encouragement that we held for each other was so special and so amazing. It really did boost my confidence when I had a group of women that wanted to learn with me. Um, So when you do have that support of your tribe, empowering one another was massive. And not only did I feel empowered by these social rides, but so many other women did too. Because of the social rides that I put on in our Sea to Sky area, which is Vancouver, Squamish, Whistler, and Pemberton, um, here in BC, Canada, 
Um, so many women writers built friendships and built their own girl gangs, their own tribes from these rides. Like to this day, there are so many women that I have met through my social rides that have become the bestest of friends. They are, you know, bridesmaids for their weddings, planning baby showers, and like honestly, like doing life with each other. And it is so special to me to see those friendships build because of these social rides. Not only did they build, you know, their friendships through these rides, but they gained so much confidence in loading and unloading their sleds. They gained more seat time to learn and hone in on their skills. These social rides are building blocks for us riders and are so important to have to bridge the gap between clinics and seat time. So you might be asking, okay, Ange, well, this is great. I love the idea of a social ride, but where can I go to attend one? And that is a great question. (laughs) So my first step would be is to ask your local snowmobile club. Ask if they have any women's social rides planned and show up for it. Even if the weather isn't the best, put in the effort into going because you'll be so happy that you did. Um, You're going to learn something, you're going to meet other women, and you're just going to have the best time, even if there isn't a whole lot of riding, because usually these social rides are just that socializing and talking and sharing experiences with one another, but guarantee that you're going to learn something, you're going to meet new friends, and chances are you're going to win a bunch of prizes or get a bunch of swag from amazing sponsors. Again, ask your local snowmobile club if they are hosting a women's social ride. If there isn't a social ride planned with your local club, then attend your club meetings and ask for one. Maybe you can be a part of organizing a social ride. I highly recommend doing it this way through your club so that you don't have anyone putting in a complaint about your ride with parks and recreation officers and dealing with legal action. Okay, so unfortunately, there are a lot of politics when it comes to sledding and organized rides. Therefore, you will need to take the appropriate action with your snowmobile federation and local snowmobile club so that there isn't any... Um, complaints or legal action with crown land or parks and recreation officers not to scare you but from my experience you want to be as prepared as possible when these things arise so yeah again just talk to your local club see if they have any social rides planned and maybe you can spark interest by asking your club if this is possible Another idea is to attend a social ride that requires a road trip. Oh my God, who doesn't love a road trip? Um, Plan a fun girls weekend getaway, hire a guide for one day to explore a new area, a new zone, and then attend the social ride the next day or vice versa. If there's a social ride one day, like on a Saturday, and then you can hire a guide or do a clinic on that Sunday, you know, whatever lines up for you guys. Um, Even though these social rides are more for socializing, you will still get to meet women within the sport and connect, which is, again, super important here. And this is the whole point about social rides is bridging the gap between clinics and getting out to ride for seat time and meeting like-minded women. If there are absolutely no social rides in or around your area, then put yourself out there and ask other women that are a better rider than you are and ask if you can ride with them. Like let's say it's one day or a couple days, but you need to make sure to explain to them that you are still learning because you wanna be honest and more often than not, they would be so honored that you asked them and would be happy to take you out. But having that communication of, hey, I'm still learning, but I would really love to go out with you if you can you know, show me the ropes or um, you know, I would just love to, uh, yeah, just to ride with you and uh, meet another woman rider. It is intimidating to ask other women. I get it. I definitely have experienced that for, for sure. 
Um, but if you want to meet people and push yourself more with your riding, then you must connect with women who are more of an, an advanced rider than you are. Another way to connect with riders is by attending local events like poker runs, barbecues, and club meetings. So getting involved with your local club is another great way to meet other like-minded individuals. Another note here is, you know, be vocal in your snowmobile forums on Facebook. Like there might be a women's Facebook page within your area, you know, put it again, put yourself out there and ask, hey, does anyone want to ride with me? This is my level. This is where I'm at. And uh, I would love to ride with somebody one day. Chances are somebody's going to reach out to you and then you can connect that way. So after all of this, I don't want you to make the mistake that I made, which is sinking more money into clinics just to meet other women riders. Like you don't need to do that, okay? Um, all you need to do is to reach out, talk to your local snowmobile clubs, attend events, whoever's putting them on, and get some seat time while socializing and meet other women. Again, if there's no social rides or events happening near you, then try to find a similar rider to you, another woman rider, and just make uh, make time for each other. Pick a day and you can start out small. You know, you can go to a parking lot together um, if you both drive individually or if you drive together and you practice loading and unloading your sled together. There can be a spotter and you guys can help each other out. That's all you need to do. And then the next time that you meet together, maybe you can unload your sled, go on the trail and go up and then until it breaks off into a zone, let's say. So you get to the end of the trail, you turn around and you come back down and you load your sled up. That's all you need to do to, again, gain more confidence and more seat time. And then the following week or however many, you know, however many days that you've been meeting up with this um, woman rider, you know, then you can go dip into a safe area and then you can learn how to pop your sled up or and you can learn how to counter steer. And again, it doesn't need to be big travel days into the backcountry to learn these skills. Just pick a safe area to learn and to practice these skills. That's all it takes. And again, just doing these small steps every single time, push yourself a little bit more every single time with your gal pal. And honestly, your confidence is just gonna skyrocket every single time that you go out. You're gonna feel so much more comfortable loading your snowmobile, so much more comfortable unloading it, so much more comfortable going on the trail. If a sled breaks down, then you guys can figure it out together on how to get back. Again, putting yourself in these situations is better than just learning it at a clinic, but it's not actually happening. Like it's great to learn at the clinics, but it's not until you live these experiences and where you got to figure things out on your own. You know, um, this is where having an in reach, a satellite phone to call in if something happens. Unfortunately, we have to go through these experiences to figure things out, but that is the best way to get better. This is what the, you know, this is what snowmobile is all about. It's not an individual sport. It is a team effort of learning together, helping one another, and empowering each other. So us women, we can do hard things. Honestly, if a, if a man can do it, we can do it. Sometimes it takes all of us to do it together, but we can do it. So I hope this episode inspires you to attend a social ride or better yet, get involved with your local snow, snowmobile club and to put on a social ride yourself um, because we need more of that these days. We need more social rides for women we need more connection more than ever and we need time to learn these skills more seat time and just more confidence more confidence boosting and more connection 
If you enjoyed this episode, please share with your friends and your family. Share it in any of your women's sled groups, snowmobile groups um, that you're part of. And I hope that you can find your girl gang to shred with or include more women into your sled gang. Anyways, until next time, until next week, keep killing it safely out there. And I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Okay, bye. Thank you.